Welcome to Behind the Muscle Podcast. Today's guest is an NPC bodybuilder. Today's guest is Justin Abbott. Justin, welcome back to the podcast, man. Thanks, Quentin, man. You doing all right? I'm, I'm doing great, dude. Uh, super, super excited to chop it up with you. You're the first guy I've had on post-USA, so we're going to kind of get into um, how prep went, uh, kind of talk about USAs and kind of what you're planning in terms of later this year in terms of competing. Uh, before we do that, uh, for all of you who are listening or watching this episode of Justin, um, Justin is a return guest. Um, if you guys want to go back to episode 106, 50 episodes uh, previous to this one, um, you guys can kind of catch the normal, uh, typical Behind the Muscle podcast where we get into Justin's story and, and uh, kind of uh, have that conversation. But again, today, we're going to talk about USAs. We're going to talk about uh, the USAs prep and kind of what the future holds for Justin. So, um, all right, Justin, let's, uh, let's kind of, let's pick up kind of where we left off. Uh, we had our last conversation post-Nationals. Why don't you talk about um, where you finished at Nationals in December? What was your mindset coming out of Nationals? Why did you uh, and your coach, uh, Ty, pick USAs? And just kind of unpack that a little bit in terms of your guys' mindset um, after Nationals going into USAs. After Nationals, we were actually, to be honest, after Nationals, I was pretty happy with placing because I had never placed um, in the first call out at a national level show before. And it was actually one of my first serious, you know, competitive preps for a national level show. Um, so we were, I wasn't like was super, wasn't super stoked at a top five because I mean, it's kind of the goal is to win, of course, you know, be one and two so you get the pro card. But we, we were satisfied, we were happy. We were, especially being our first prep together, how conditioned we got, how pill we got. And that was our feedback. It was basically your condition, you're peeled, basically grow your upper body more to match your legs, and you're there. Um, so we kind of went, you know, heavy on the food, like straight off of nationals. Just like normally I do two, like one to two years off, like every time, always a one to two year off, off season. And we were just rolling and rolling and rolling. Food was going higher and higher and higher and growing like crazy. And um, for especially, you know, using that post-show rebound, but being safe with it too, of course. But um, anyways, we're able to grow like crazy. And then I don't know what – I don't know if he talked me into it or what, but because I, I wouldn't plan on competing. But Ty likes to – Ty likes for people to compete. And I think that was actually the aiming point for Tamara, what she actually turned pro this weekend, if you saw that. Um, so I think that that was like his aim point. He's like, I'm going to be there. So I think I'm going to talk, talk him into it. And knowing me, like how I am, even like right now, like just two days after the show, or what is it? It was Tuesday. Three days after the show, I'm, you know, 100% on diet. I've been on 100% diet like, the whole time. So um, coming off of that, like basically I was in prep the whole time. So like the – you know, coming from prep last year, we started before July for December, basically starting to clean everything up. And then me falling through with an off season, which really wasn't an off season at all. Only thing off was the, the special things that we used in bodybuilding. Uh, but just driving food up for, you know, growth and stuff like that. Um, and just using basically the same mindset, which a lot of people have problems with, using the same mindset as prep as in the off season, not missing meals, not having off meals, because if you have an off meal for me, I don't know how it's going to mess with my stomach. And when I'm eating my food, my normal food, every meal, my digestion is perfect. Everything's perfect. Everything rolls. And probably that cheat meal was probably less calories than my meal was going to be anyways um, at that point. So that's in the off season. And so we got to like, I don't know, 20 weeks out of USA's and like, I don't know. You probably – you kept up with my progress. I never got fat, like, the whole time. and never got fat. He was like, well, let's just, let's just keep it rolling, you know, I, you know, actually increasing food, increasing food. We actually probably increased food all the way to, like, 12 weeks out, just trying to push it, push it, push it, push it to where it's like once we started dieting, 
yeah, he would make small changes and just get like a crazy dramatic drop. And like, I would say this is no doubt the less, the least cardio I've ever had to do. I think I did, did like the most of us 30 minutes, uh, like five times a week. And then got down to, I would honestly say probably three weeks, three or four weeks out, we were already ready completely. But we decided to do junior nationals at like six weeks out. And it was just like literally decided three days before, like, he's like, hey, like, you know, you're not like, we're not, we're not where I would want to step on stage, USA's or national level. But I think we're good enough to go win junior USA. So we went, we won the super heavy class when we lost to a guy that ended up dropping down to light heavy at USA's. I think you had him on, the guy that won the overall. Um, and the feedback was just coming tighter. And then I told the guy that gave me the feedback, the judge, you know, we just decided to do this show and we're doing USA's in six weeks out. He was like, well, I didn't, I didn't realize that you're actually in good condition for being six weeks out of USA's. And I was like, yeah, cool. Anyway, so I talked to him after the show and he was like, I can't believe what you did in six weeks. But um, anyways, where's that? Oh, that was a junior USA. Anyways, we're probably ready like three or four weeks out like 100% ready at three weeks out for sure. And he was like, um, the whole time going into it, like my coach, uh, Tyler, he actually won the Mr. Arkansas last year. And um, I've done it before. Like, it was my very first show when we first met. And I won the junior or the junior or the novice class overall or whatever. He was like, it's one week out. Let's just do it, get the win. And then we'll just roll. We won't change anything. We'll just roll into national or to USA's and do that. And so we did that. But like I said, like three or four weeks out, we noticed like my body weight, like we just start like just drop out of nowhere. And we were already doing like twice a week check-ins at this point to where we started having to do check-ins like every single day because my body would just like, we would get down to like, this is this is funny, but a lot of people are probably going to think I'm joking. Or, I didn't tell a lot of people this because you don't want to tell a lot of people this and then, like, you show up out of shape. So, like, I never, like, ever, like, posted about this. But, like, we actually had to do to where if I got in, like, 300 carbs, my body might drop, like, three or four pounds that day. Like, it was just kind of crazy. And then, so, like, we would have to do super high days around eight to a 1,000 grams of carbs with around 150 grams of fats for those days. And then a, a couple of day, a couple of those high days, like we'd have to do periodically back-to-back -back high days or three high days in a row. And like some of those would be like, all right, well, you need to go eat. I have my favorite breakfast spot here. And I was like, you have to go eat breakfast in the morning. Like you just like, and we're just going to keep dropping. So I didn't post any of that stuff because I don't want to like to brag, but two, I was like, I'm not going to post for this because we don't show up in shape or something. And everybody was like, oh, we was posting all this food. Well, um, so we did the Arkansas, went really good with that. We kind of did like a, a mini-ish kind of peak, not really – like we didn't do anything crazy with water or anything like that, but we did find out that my body actually was able to do a lot better with less water this time. We think with nationals, I didn't have enough muscle to really fill out with glycogen, so I needed the water to actually help me fill out. But we figured out that I need a little bit – you could use a little bit less water with me because no, on a normal day, I drink around seven to seven to ten liters of water probably. I drink a lot of water, and I always wake up – like, I hate looking at myself at night. But when I wake up in the morning, I've used the bathroom so many times at night that I just wake up completely bone dry. We knew that. But we play with it a little bit, drop the water back a little bit, and then just – every time just was crispier and crisper as, as the day went on and stuff like that. So we kind of figured that out for USA's and um, I really can't imagine a peak going any better. The only thing is it was a little tougher for some reason between the Arkansas show, which was a week before. So last weekend and then weigh-ins for USA's, we had lost like almost seven pounds. And I don't, we don't know how it just, our, my body just, I guess, with the little bit of a kind of peak that we did. And when we did that, we were like, well, since we kind of peaked a little bit, kind of added some more food, kind of filled out, let's just pull the food back a little bit. Like, and then and we pulled back food for like a day. And my body just like, just, just like ran away from us. So we had like my carbos, which is probably nothing out of the ordinary for, um, 
a super heavy at national stuff like that but each meal was like 500 grams of rice with fruit and then stuff like so i was having like almost 175 to 200 grams of carbs per meal just trying to fill back out um and end up losing like a little bit of weight at the end but that's that's probably just drawing out but uh i can't really imagine a prep going any smoother it doesn't mean it was easy because like even when you're when you weigh more and you're bigger, even though you're only getting down to like 300, 350 carbs, you still feel like complete death. But um, probably one of the smoothest for sure and easiest uh, as, in terms of not having to suffer as bad. And the peak, um, Tyler's just, Tyler's good with it. Like I wake up in the morning, we always wake up, we have a thing with like, when I wake up, like how you feel? And I always say, how do you like your bacon? And crispy because I'm all normally wake up crispy, so um, just in the it was able to fill me out without putting on any kind of fluid or any kind of anything like that. Because even I've had a lot of really highly respected um people in the industry that reached out and was like, Man, your conditioning was just completely insane. Which we're, we're kind of already known for that, nationals are known for that, so we just kind of basically set in stone that conditioning checkpoint that conditioning like like he's going to bring it so now it's like um you might have saw what i posted up he's his email he sent me he was just like you know we're always in condition this and that but it's like it's time to just put the nail in the coffin so we're going to take for sure at least a, a year i don't care if it's two years but when i step on stage again I don't, it, it won't be a question we'll be in condition we'll be the, not that it won't have to be the biggest guy on stage, but it will be big enough because that was the, that was the only critique again was just like it's like your upper body is matching your lower body now. Just grow both of them together and just get a little bit more denser, a little bit bigger, and you're there. Because I think a lot of people's critique was kind of like it doesn't really matter. It's just the judges that maybe we pulled hard too hard to really showcase the fullness and stuff like that that, that I had at the Arkansas. But we were way sharper than, than the Arkansas because we actually peaked. So it's kind of like a give or take. But I'd really, I'd much rather be the most straightest guy on stage. So that's that's kind of how the prep went, and that's kind of how I'm looking at it now. Is we're doing the same thing we did at nationals. Just now we're just pushing food, trying to get as much growth as possible off of this rebound, and we'll uh, we'll aim for something in a year or two for sure. All right. So um, some stuff I want to unpack from that, <clears throat> Justin. Mm -hmm. uh, now, is this the first time that you kind of did, now you did uh, Junior USAs, you did Mr. Arkansas, and then you did uh, USAs. Is this the first time that you kind of went bang, bang, bang like that in terms of competing? How, how does that compare to how you competed, like let's say in Nationals in December? Did you do anything before that or not? And then how, how did, do you feel like your body responded to doing, you know, kind of three shows within six weeks, six weeks of each other? It's not the first time I've ever done that. I did, I was working with another coach. So my very first year competing, I did one show, one and done. My second time I was working with another coach. I did uh, Sun City Regional in El Paso, Texas. That was my first show, won that overall. And then it was like two weeks later, or some three weeks later, something like that, was North America's. I wasn't ready to go to North America's. There was no reason for me to go to North America's. This particular coach had about, I don't know, probably 10 or 15 different clients going. And I was definitely the least on his list. And it's probably just what what he was doing is basically having us pay for his way to the show and stuff like that. So he was like, he was like, are you gonna go? This and that. And I was like, man, I'm not ready. This and that. He was like, I mean, I think you can get top five. And I think he was just blowing smoke on him, but like blowing kind of blowing smoke just to just to get some extra money. So like basically his ship was free and stuff like that. And so that was the second show. And then, so I stopped kind of working with that coach after that show. And there was a, another show that's in Arkansas. It's a, it's not the Mr. Arkansas, but it's like the all South muscle or something like that. It's in Little Rock. And I live, I mean, basically in Little Rock. So what I was doing is um, I, would just have on my cardio I was all on my own and just like move my food up to you know a couple hundred grams of carbs a day and I was like oh my body's growing soaking it up and staying lean and so I just 
just kept my cardio. My, it was funny. My cardio was just literally riding a, a, a little little bike around my block like three times. And uh, I was like, the show was coming up closer and closer. And I was like, man, you know, I might do it. But, you know, I'm just kind of the whole last week deal kind of sometimes flips you out. But if you're ready, you're ready. Like, there's, you don't have to really change a lot. The variables are not that hard. So I kind of ran the same type of peak. The only thing I didn't change was food. And I just kind of put water super high for, the, you know, the first three days of the week and then kind of slowly tapered it off. And, and then what I did is I woke up literally – Friday, the morning that you have to do your check-ins and stuff like that. And I took pictures and I was like, I can definitely do it. like like I'm that's so what I was trying to glue table strings are still in. I still look really good. I'm bigger and fuller. I was like literally like 20 pounds bigger. Um and so I did that. That was the first time I ever competed as a super. And I won that. So I did that one by myself. But that's a, I did three shows then and then last year. We did, to qualify again, we did the Oklahoma Grand Prix and then Nationals, which was four weeks between, which was, it's kind of terrible. Like, it, it kind of sucks. Like, you kind of, like, you get done with one, and then you're like, dang, I got, you're already kind of dead, and you're like, well, I got four weeks to kill myself more. And then this one wasn't as bad because everything was running, like, I'm really weird I don't know. I don't know how this happens, why it happens, whatever. But my training never, never stops progressing, all the way through prep. Like this was the hardest to keep my progression going, but just because I think I got so strong in that small, small off season period, and put on so much weight. When the weight did start to come off, it was hard to keep it. But I was still hitting PRs like a week out, two weeks out. Um. But so that was the that was the we did the Grand Prix Nationals and then we did the Junior US or Junior Nationals, which that one, like I said, it wasn't bad because we didn't even really we hardly didn't do anything. I literally ate my base diet. We did nothing pretty much for it, and uh, so it really didn't affect me at all or anything like that. And we were in such a good spot, I was able to go have a meal that night and then a meal that next morning with my my wife and then. Um, the Arkansas didn't mess it up either because literally once you're once you're at that show, then literally we came. I came back home for one day and then flew out to Vegas because it's literally five days away from each other because it's on starting on a Friday. So it really my body. I was kind of nervous about doing the peak uh, or like kind of practicing a peak. But a lot of times you start messing with variables, especially a week out. You don't know what's going to happen. You might start retaining water, especially with a flight and stuff. But my body seemed to respond really well. Of course, I was really flat that whole, the, you know, last week or whatever. But didn't hold any water. Was able to peak perfectly again for um, USA. So uh, me and my body, we responded great from it. Like we didn't really – wouldn't know – wasn't really any kind of setbacks from it. So Very cool. Now, uh, how, how long – have you, when was your first competition? What year? How long have you actually been competing, Justin? My first competition was 2017. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, 2017, it was the Mr. Arkansas. And I won the novice overall there. And I played second behind a national level guy um, as a light heavyweight. Uh, he went on to do nationals. I don't remember what he plays, but he was a, he's a local guy from here. He's, um, Actually, I'm pretty sure he's a hormone doctor now. But um, so that was five years ago. Okay. Now, you uh, you mentioned that you won uh, Mr. Arkansas this year, and then your coach, Ty, uh, won it last year. Was that kind of cool? I think I saw Ty post something about it. But, you know, when you're on Instagram, you see so many pictures, you see so yeah. much stuff, it's hard to remember. But um, I did see either you or him or both of you post something about that. Was that kind of cool to have – uh, you know, your coach there who won it last year and then being able to kind of carry on that mantle within, uh, you know, your guys' own uh, own community, so to speak? Yeah, it, it was cool because, like I said, like, it, what's, what's cool is it's actually like a whole little kind of a timeline. You're talking about my first competition was in Mr. Arkansas. And that's the first time I ever met Ty. Um, and then fast forward, now he's my coach where he won Arkansas and then I won Arkansas, which is – 
it's kind of cool. It's, you know, it's a, it's a club that you're in, which is, it's kind of neat. It's actually today. Uh, I don't know if you saw me post this on my uh, gym page or not, because that's where I'm at right now is my gym. But I was walking up front and this older guy walked in, not old, but like fifties walked in pretty, pretty jacked. And I was like, man, you can I help you? You know, he's probably just coming to check out the gym. Um, he was like, you know, he's we just wanted to look around and he want to talk about buying and selling equipment and stuff like that. And then we got to talking and he was like, yeah, Mr. Arkansas from, uh, he won in 1992 or something like that. And I was like, no way for real. And he was like, yeah. I was like, well, I just won it last weekend. He was like, no way. That's crazy. So I got a picture with him. And anyway, this, so there's very like, uh, back in the day, you could actually only win it. Like you couldn't win it back to back. You had to win it. And if you won it, you had to take a year off. And then you, you come back and you can win it again if you if you beat the person who won. But so it's a cool little deal. I actually knew I trained at a gym uh, called a uh, twenty four hour Christian's gym, and there was a guy there named Dennis Rupel that he owned he owned that gym, and he was Mister Arkansas, so I know him. And then we had a guy named uh, I just went blank. It was a only actually the only men's open pro that we have. Um, he passed away. Oh, uh, Youngblood, uh, so Dalton Youngblood, I think it was. So, I mean, it's pretty cool just to have your name up there and stuff like that, and uh, kind of like a little club type of deal. Um, but it is cool to have Ty. And like I said, Ty's kind of like Ty's more of a. He's not just a coach. He's a probably like my. He's just probably my best friend and. Um, mentors me a lot as far as coaching and stuff. So like, like I said, going to all these shows and stuff like that, especially as multiple clients, you know, I'm sitting back, you know, we're looking at clients together, you know, like not my clients, but his clients. And I'm kind of like assessing how he's going and like just watching them in the act and like how intuitive he is with it or how on the money he is with it. And like doesn't second guess himself or he's sitting there like, you know, it, it is, it's cool to sit there and watch it and especially how you handle such, especially like, you know, the USAs where you have six or seven clients and you're like, you know, each one of them's coming through the room. Cause I'm, you know, I have, I had an Airbnb by myself. So like I was just coming up there. I'd come up there in the morning. I just bring all my stuff. And I just, you know, just chill on his couch and stuff like that. And, you know, I would pose like, let's do this, let's do this, or, you know, keep this game plan the same. So it is cool. And I've learned a lot from him was watching him so I, that's a it's a big uh blessing in my corner um but besides that yeah it's pretty cool having too much Arkansas for sure man now uh the bodybuilding uh community in Arkansas uh I think you just said there's like been only one IFBB pro coming out of Arkansas uh is it is it a is it kind of dead is it is it growing there in Arkansas is is bodybuilding kind of a a thing anywhere in, in that area or, or not well, really? Cause there's, there's IFBB pros. Like we have Brooke Walker. She's actually a top five Olympian. Uh, she's actually right down the street at a different gym. Uh, we have a couple of different classic guys. And so I'm talking just like, as far as the open men's open, I think he's one of our only pros that we've ever had. As far as I'm not talking about masters or anything like that. I think we have another masters that trains at another gym. Uh, we have a few bikini and stuff like that, but like we don't have any open, I think that are actually alive right now. So I wouldn't say that bodybuilding is dead in Arkansas. It's not thriving in Arkansas, but with our gym, if you want to look us up, it's Rough House Fitness located in Conway, Arkansas. We're trying to bring that atmosphere to, to Arkansas. So we have our like a whole section or a whole side it's its own room of nothing but just like special like leg day equipment like stuff you're not going to find anywhere pretty much in any gym like we pretty much will have like it was cool going to vegas and training the dragon's layer you know because there's a bunch of people there but not bashing the dragon's layer but just it's it's hard to travel to other gyms when you have the best setup you can possibly have it's like like my fiance and us, we have a house now in Little Rock, and it's like we have gyms all around us. But it's like, say, if it's on a Saturday or Sunday, and I'm not working that, I'm not coming to work that day, I'm still going to come here and still going to train because we have the best equipment. Like, you need, they definitely have to follow us. Like, Rough House Fitness, R U F F 
house fitness on Instagram and just check it out. It's, 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 it's nuts. Or you can go on my page and look at what I'm on there. But, um, like I said, I wouldn't say it's dead because like we just turned Tamara just turned pro. She's from Little Rock. Um, crazy physique on her. Um, it's not dead. It's it's like there's a, there's a smaller community. It's it's not like Dallas, Texas, put it that way, or you know like um, where else? I mean, like it's not like where they're turning uh, Stewart, Florida, into something crazy. So it's nothing like that. But it's like there are a few select you know group of people that are in the community. Like just in my gym alone, I think Ty probably coaches almost 10 clients just out of my, out of my gym period. So like, it's a serious gym people. It's a serious training. Like you, you pretty much know a lot of times when you see them. Um, and then there's of course the people that just like to work out just fitness. Um, we have uh, three different colleges in our town. So it's a lot of, you know, people that are just younger, staying healthy, staying fit, but you can tell the bodybuilders or the, the people that are training for something. Um, you, you notice those pretty quick. For sure. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's, let's, I want to get a little bit more in depth with, uh, you know, this past weekend, just a few days ago, uh, competing at USA. So you got fourth place in the super heavies, which is, which is really awesome. Now, uh, you know, it sounds like this prep overall went pretty smooth for you, Justin. Uh, why don't you just kind of walk us through? So, uh, from, if I remember right, pre-judging was on Friday and then you guys come back on Saturday kind of for, uh, the second round, so to speak. So um, going into Friday night, uh, walk us kind of through pre-judging. What was your mindset? Um, you know, uh, how did you kind of feel when you're up there on the in the first call outs with Stuart, Brandon, Cole? I think there might have been uh, another person or two, but just to walk us through kind of in-depth pre-judging Friday night. What was your mindset? What was going through your mind uh, when pre-judging was over? Where, where, where were you at with, uh, with your thoughts? All right. Well, coming coming into USA is like it was pretty pretty known that the super heavies are going to be stacked, which is we're not, not, not nothing afraid. Of, we're not afraid of anything like that, or anything like that. But uh, and just talking to all the guys and stuff like that, I had a pretty good camaraderie with all the guys, and then um, just knew that we were like I knew me and Tyler knew we were bringing the best we could possibly bring. Um, so I was ecstatic about that, happy about that, confident, like super confident. And I, we knew that anything – I mean, of course you're going there to win, but you know who you're going against. And, you know, you know, I was probably one of the lightest guys on stage probably. And still, I hate saying it and I hate hearing it and I hate getting it all the time, but definitely the youngest on stage too. Um, so going up there, I had a lot of confidence, knew that, you know, we were peaked perfectly. So, like – there's a difference. Like you can always tell when somebody knows like they're, they're peak perfectly. So I feel like I brought the confidence to stage. Um, and that there was no question in my mind, the first call out, like there's no, like when I get on stage, cause I've never lost besides at nationals or, or USA. So like, I'm always very, very confident, like knowing, you know, I'm going to get a first call out or this and that, but realistically our goal was to move forward uh, in our placing from nationals, which we did, uh, I would, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be, I'm not going to not say that I didn't deserve a top three finish. Uh, cause I definitely, and from a lot of people that are very respected from around the sport, I believe so too, but leaving or coming into pre-judging stuff like that, very confident, everything went smooth. Um, coming off of prejudging, a little pissed off, not going to lie. Uh, even though we did improve our placing, we knew we improved our placing. Um, you always you, – you, you're coming to win. And, and of course, a lot of people don't talk about – I mean, this sport, sport is expensive too. And then going – you know, doing, you know, three shows this year with plane travel and car rental and, you know, getting your food there and all this stuff like that. So – to set to be like that was like my uh, you know family's like are you okay and I'm like yeah I'm okay but like I'm very happy we you know what we brought but I'm very pissed off about where we got you know because you always want to you were going for a pro card there's no question about that that's the ultimate goal 
Um, and to be pissed off about reserving, a, you know, at least a top three placing um, and then just being consistent as far as, like, what they're looking for. I don't feel like it was a big consistency uh, with that. I can see where my flaws are. I'm not stupid. Like, I'm not saying I don't have any flaws or whoever else on stage would have flaws or who. I have weak shots. Some people have other weak shots, and some people have real strong shots. Um, but it's like, you know, when me and Ty talked after, we're like, you know, we're super happy. And I don't think we could have done anything better or different. But it just, you know, it does kind of piss you off a little bit. I mean, I wasn't mad by any means or anything like that. I still had a lot of fun. And that was coming off of prejudging. And then we were just like, you know what, let's just try to come in a lot fuller, even try to get sharper. Like, you know, you're not going to lose body fat at that point, which was, there really wasn't any to lose anyways. But let's just try to come in fuller and harder and, you know, just kind of like just let's just see what we can do here and we'll learn from, you know, whatever. And we came in, like I said, we had a really high level respected coach that also had somebody in the super heavy class was like, you know, Justin came in and y'all came in the finals just cr like crazy different. So I think maybe we could have got maybe a, a, you know, a second look, but it didn't matter at that point because I'm not going for a pro card. Uh, maybe could have squeezed in the top three, I think, pretty easily. But uh, we just kind of use it as more of like a tool now. So now that's another tool in our arsenal, knowing that, you know, if we ever have to do another two-day show, which I hope we never do, except for the Olympia or something one day, but uh, that we can get harder uh, throughout the day, which because, like I said, I normally wake up super dry, and then by the end of the day, I um, look like a waterlogged uh, – whatever but uh anyways that's kind of how we kind of how we treat it and we have fun it's fun watching your body change you know call by call that Ty's making and stuff like that so I mean all in all it was a win-win it was, it was an awesome weekend what did, what did you think about uh Stuart I mean he came out of your guys's uh class and then obviously he won the overall um and all mm -hmm. like all the like top uh, five guys in your class I've had on the podcast. All of you guys are awesome. So, um, mm -hmm. but, uh, and I had Stuart on just like a week ago, super cool guy. Um, what did you oh, think yeah. about his physique? What did you think about him, uh, winning the overall coming out of your class? I mean, that's got to make all you guys feel pretty good that the, the super heavyweight represented well in the overall. Oh, for sure. For sure. Stuart, I'll tell you right now, Stuart is probably one of the nicest guys that you'll probably meet. Uh, Stuart was the most open, like, so it's funny, you, some reason with this bodybuilders, you get backstage and, you know, everybody knows who, you, everybody, I mean, Brandon knew who I was, you know, I knew who Cole was, Stu knew who we were, stuff like that, but some reason as bodybuilders, a lot of times, and why, I don't know, maybe it's just the amateur level or something like that, but it's like, Everybody sticks to their own, stays their own. When, when I when I first saw Stuart, Stuart, you know, he who said what's up, this and that. And I, you know, we talked and bullcrapped and joked around the whole time backstage when we we're laying down and stuff like that. While other people were reserved and everything, but you know, when you're asking people what their plans are, and they're like, "Oh, we're going to shut it down," and then it comes out. You talk to one of their friends at the gym the next day. They're like, "Oh, we're doing North America." So like, he just told me yesterday that you're shutting it down. So. Um, Stuart was one of the nicest, most genuine guys, and I think he very well deserved it. And if there's one thing you learn about Stuart, and it, it makes you realize it was just kind of a joke that was ongoing is you never trust anybody or anything that you see bodybuilding wise on Instagram if it's taken off of a phone that is like a potato. So it's like he's posting these updates and stuff, and I'm kind of like, man, like. You know, he's in shape, but he's really kind of soft. Like, you know, he's not really anything special. But then you see him in person, you're like, well, shit, his phone is terrible. You know, and everybody else has been taking it on the iPhone 11. They're not even in shape, you know what I'm saying? So it was kind of a – it was just kind of an ongoing kind of a joke thing that we had going on. And then uh, it was awesome to see see that he, him win it because, like I said, he, he doesn't look anything like he does in person. He just round, full. Like, it's almost like he's like the perfect height has a perfect length arms, perfect length legs. Everything just kind of like flows, like midsection's not blown out. Everything flows and 
and backstage he looks i mean everybody looks big backstage but once he's on stage he just looks like a, he just he, he he composed really good he's just a good guy and i'm i'm glad he won it and I'm glad he's actually doing tampa cuz he was he was talking about shutting it down too i was like man you got a freaking another week come on bro you can you can do tampa and so he's going to do tampa and maybe texas but uh yeah, it was uh, it was cool. It was nice to see the supers take it. That's what I like seeing. You know what? I I've only chatted with Stu uh, on the podcast for you know about an hour, but uh, it doesn't surprise me that he was chit chatting with you and kind of keeping things lighthearted because he said one of the things that he said he's like, man, he's like bodybuilders just he's like they just take everything too serious. And then you know you look at his Instagram, he's Mister USA, and it's beef stew like 91 so it's like yeah. that that sounds exactly like uh stewart you know just kind of keeping it lighthearted, which is which is cool man it's good to have different personalities within bodybuilding yeah. now i want to ask you this uh justin then we'll kind of start wrapping things up here um in terms of when you look at your own physique and maybe mm -hmm. ty and, and maybe some other people within your inner circle what are what do you feel like are some of your strengths and then what are some of those weaknesses or areas that you really feel like you could you could bring up to to bring a better package when you step on stage sometime in the future overall it's going to be just size i need more size like just everywhere there's and then that's how bodybuilders are always normally anyway I just need more size um i would say shoulders have definitely come up a lot i would say my arms probably need to come up a lot too especially on like maybe like front shots um lats from the front my back from the back though has improved dramatically it was it was much improved conditioning was, was there um basically i think i need a lot more sweep to my quads i have big legs but i think i need more sweep to them and just a more upper shelf if i can have bigger chest wider quads a little bit more broader shoulders which i don't have super broad clavicles but broader shoulders just overall, I just need everything. And like I said, I know you, you've heard me say this probably on the last one too. You're tired of hearing people saying, oh, it's because you're young and stuff like that, which it is. You know, I'm only 25, so I got to kind of look at it like that and just need some muscle maturity. And once that comes in, I don't think – I think the next time that anybody sees me on stage again, there, there won't be a question that, that that's, that's an IFBB pro. So, And so kind of just uh, wrapping up uh, the conversation here, uh, just a, a bit. Um, it sounds like you're going to take at least a year off then before you step on stage again. Yeah, I won't. I won't do another um, four month break. I'll I'll have a full full year for sure to grow. Um, and I think the progress that is going to be capable between me and Ty is going to be undeniable. So that's that's kind of the goal here is just kind of have a little bit of a break and then get right into it and, you know, train for next year, the year after, whichever one happens. Cause like I said, my fiance or my wife just um, started med school. She starts med school this week. So got a lot of stuff, a lot of, a lot of stuff to take care of at home. So you gotta, I, that I've, she's put up with me for basically a year and a half of being nothing but a bodybuilder. So it's time to do some things that I need to do and, that's kind of how it is right now. What do you, uh, I want to talk, I just want to touch on training really quick because everybody always appreciates that. Um, and Ty kind of told me that you're, you're pretty psychotic when, when it comes to your training. So uh, what, what's kind of your training philosophy or what, what have you found up to this point to be uh, what you like best for your physique and uh, your, uh, your, your advancement within uh, hypertrophy? How, how do you kind of train uh, most of the time, Justin? I think the biggest leaps in progress that I've made have came from me actually listening. Ty brought it to my attention a few times and stuff like that, where I was doing two or th I was doing three to four sets per exercise, all out, this and that, which I think was doing way too much of a detriment. Um, so what I really did this, what would you say, off season or whatever, I really kind of pulled back, look at my split, what need to prioritize. I need to know my shoulders, chest, and back need to prioritize. So I was hitting legs a little less frequent, but I'll split them up, but I might put a little bit of hamstring with back just to keep the the volume on the legs too. 
but I was also taking the appropriate rest. Um, I was doing no more than two on, one off. Sometimes it might have been one on, one off, stuff like that. Especially if I felt beat, then I knew I needed a rest day. I would take it without hesitation. And it's the first time I've ever done that. And I tell a lot of people, like a lot, of, especially young guys that come to the gym, they're like, I hate taking rest days. And I look at them like, I cannot wait for my rest day. I'm looking forward to my rest day because I know if I can train five or six, ten consecutive days, I'm not training hard enough. There's no way I can train. I can't train. I do it sometimes later in prep just, just purely because you're not going to build a lot of muscle. You're trying to lose body fat. But um, I can't train three days in a row and actually have a good workout and then recover. Like, I have to take those days off. So I pulled back on – the training days and put more rest days in place and made those rest days to me mandatory. I had to take them this and that. And then um, also pull back the volume and then did like literally two all out sets normally. And one was a top and one was a back off or it literally might've been one top for that whole exercise, stuff like that. So a very a low volume approach, but like I said, I was doing like a push. So, I would do chest, shoulders, and triceps, like, on my A day. And then my push B day would be more shoulder dominant and a little bit of chest just to touch up and then triceps. So the volume over the session was a little higher, but the volume per body part was lower on those sessions, but it was split up between two days. Now, my back day – was more of a pull day too. Sometimes it incorporated hamstrings, but it might be like one seated hamstring curl or one stiff leg or one deadlift or something like that. But it would be, you know, my lat, mid back. So I would train every part of my back with a movement. Then I'll have a rear delt and then two biceps at the end. And that's kind of how I kept my frequency kind of high enough that I was feeling like I was hitting it enough throughout the week but low enough that I was really able to recover the next time I would hit it. So that's kind of how I did that. And like I said, I split my leg days up between a quad dominant day and a hamstring dominant day. Um, and like, I feel like that, that would like this split right here is probably something I'll ride out unless I just see something stalling or something like that. And then I'll look at it. But a lot of emphasis was placed on my back and I feel like my back came up like tremendously. Excellent, man. All right. A fun question for you. Uh, you got uh, any Olympia predictions for us? Who do you, who do you think, uh, uh, do you think uh, big Rami is going to repeat? Do you have any uh, dark horses? What, what do you, what do you think about the Olympia so far with uh, who's qualified? Well, I'm going to go ahead and throw it out there, which is, it's already been said. Uh, I think Nick Walker has a very good chance of taking it this year. Um, I think it could be between Nick Hunter, um, Hottie will be up there. I just don't know if Hottie – it's not the – it's not the – it's not really the shape thing, but it's just something about his physique is not as, like, pleasing as Hunter's or as freaky as Nick's. Like, Nick, you know, just has – Nick's crazy as long as, you know, it's kind of iffy about the coach situation. So, we'll see on that. But I think between Nick and Hunter – um, those are going to be your top two guys running for it. They're going to dial it out. I think they're going to be battling out with each other for a long time. It's going to be fun to see because uh, Hunter's never had a real off season, And I don't think Nick really has either since he turned pro. So just to see what those guys are going to do, I think it's going to be uh, crazy. I, do I think Ramsey's going to be repeat? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think he can. I don't think he can pull it off. Um, those are kind of my predictions. Yeah. Cool. I'll, I'll play those, I'm yeah. I'm right with you. Let's let's uh no 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 hate in terms of Rami, but uh, no. I'm just not a not a fan of his physique at all. And let's uh, I'd love to see uh, a fresh young uh, face up there. So um Justin, uh, thanks my man for coming on. Uh, just to kind of give a recap of your perspective with USA's and how it went for you. Um, yes, if you have any, if you have any final thoughts, any final words, um, the platform is yours. Why don't you give your Instagram the gym's Instagram, uh, anything else. And then I'll do a quick outro and that'll be, that'll be a wrap. All right. 
Uh, my Instagram, my personal Instagram account is Justin underscore Wyatt 24. Uh, my coaching page is Addicted Athletics 24. Uh, my gym uh, that I co-own with Tyler Ruff is Ruff House Fitness, R-U-F-F House Fitness. Um, that's on Instagram. And check us out there, especially if you're in the area. Come check us out. And um, that's pretty much it, man. Thanks for having me on. You're, you're very welcome, Justin. All of you uh, who are tuning in to another episode of Behind the Muscle Podcast, I just want to say thank you so much. Um, if, again, if it wasn't for all of you, the podcast wouldn't exist. Really quickly, as we wrap up our awesome conversation with Justin today, um, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. We're over 900 subscribers. Uh, it's, it's crazy because uh, this YouTube channel had less than 100 um, in less than, a, less than a year ago. So um, we're, we're on a fast track to 1,000. So make sure uh, you, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, um, go to Behind the Muscle Podcast on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Also, another huge favor, take this episode with Justin, share it on your Instagram stories, make sure you tag Justin, uh, tag his uh, gym, and then also make sure you tag us behind the muscle podcast so that we know you listen specifically uh, to this episode and found great value in it. When you guys share uh, these uh, conversations of behind the muscle podcast with all the great guests on your Instagram, it's just so helpful because uh, you know, you guys have followers uh, that don't follow Behind the Muscle podcast, and uh, they might see you sharing this episode or other episodes. They're going to come follow us uh, on Instagram. They're going to subscribe on YouTube, and it's just a great way to organically grow the community. And that's really my heart. I'm not. There's no advertisement. No, nobody's getting paid for any of this stuff. I just want this to be an organic growth, and that organic growth will happen. Uh, because of all of you. So thank you. And then finally, I will leave you all with this. Remember, behind the muscle, there's always a story. We'll catch you guys later. Peace.